Serverless infrastructure makes it really easy to build a backend without having to worry about servers. And today I want to show you how to use a serverless cloud platform called Lolo to build and deploy a chat room application to the cloud. So let's get into it. So here we are in the Lolo console. The first thing that we're going to do here to get started is click on create app in the top left and we're going to give our application a name. So we're going to call this WS demo in this case or WebSocket demo. We're going to click on next here so we can get started and proceed through the wizard. And by default, we're taking a look at the Lolo canvas or what I like to call the studio style editor. And this is where we're going to be creating functions and we're going to be piping data from one function to another. And this is basically where you're going to be spending a lot of time in your Lolo application to create the workflow for whatever application you are trying to develop. Now, a couple small things before we get started, I wanted to show you just in case this is your first time working with Lolo. If we go to the settings section and then we click on the module section here, uh, you can, of course, by the way, give this a new name if you wish. Uh, this module section is used to import third party dependencies, either through some of them that are provided using this notation here. Or if you have some external repositories that you want to bring in, you can also do that by providing the URL. And then the second thing I want to talk about is just briefly the variable section. Section. You can create application variables to store things like credentials or secret keys or whatever you want, uh, just so you're not storing any of that stuff in your source code itself. A couple other things, the log section, this is going to be very useful for debugging your application. We're going to see this in action a little bit later. And then finally, these two buttons up here, the save and run button. The save button is going to save the current state of your application. The run button is going to deploy your application. Pretty straightforward so far. So let's go back to the build section and get started in the canvas uh, by creating our WebSocket HTTP server. So we're going to click on this plus button over here and we are going to search out of the library functions for our WebSocket trigger. And we're going to click on this pre-built library function that's provided by Lolo and it's going to add it to our canvas here. I'm going to minimize that, get it out of the way. Now let's briefly talk about what this thing is. So this function is kind of an all-in-one WebSocket-based application. It makes it so that you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You don't need to build your own HTTP server. It's going to do things like produce a WebSocket endpoint. It's going to produce connection IDs when someone tries to connect to your application. It's going to automatically close connections when they're no longer in use. There's a whole bunch of goodness that comes out of this pre-built WebSocket-based function here that we are going to heavily utilize. Another thing to note are these three little indicators here. These are called Lolo ports, and you can see that they have names associated with them. So request or rec, uh, message and close. Now in the world of Lolo, ports are what are used to pipe information or move information around from one function to the next. So for example, in this case, the request port is going to be used when someone makes an initial connection to our WebSocket endpoint. And we're going to be able to pipe that information into another function that maybe wants to send a confirmation message or some send some kind of connection message back to the user. The message port is going to be used for whenever messages get transmitted to our endpoint and we're going to broadcast those messages to other users in our chat room. And then our closed port is going to be used when our connection is terminated. So first I want to just go into our WebSocket function here and we need to do just a very simple thing here which is to add a path for our endpoint. So we're just going to type in slash WebSocket here. And then we're going to go to the external URL section and this is going to be the WebSocket endpoint that we want to connect to. I'm going to copy this to my clipboard. Now, what I want to do now is just a very simple sanity test to make sure that we are able to connect to this endpoint successfully. So I'm going to click on back. We're going to click on save to save the current state. We're going to click on run so we can deploy this application. You can see the deployment is in progress. It may take a moment or so. If we go to logs, we should see in a moment that, yep, we are listening on port 4000. So I want to bring you into this other tab here, which I often use to, like it says, test WebSocket servers and test connection endpoints. So we're just going to paste in our WebSocket endpoint here just to confirm that everything is working at this point in time. So we're going to click on connect and you can see here connection has been established. And if we go back to the Lolo console, you can see we have a new message here. No state topic found. Nothing happens yet because again, we haven't piped that data anywhere and we're not logging that information yet, but we'll be doing that in a couple moments. So let's go back to the build section and actually get started building the logic out for this uh, WebSocket trigger here. 
So what we want to do now is create another function that's basically going to be our kind of a router. It's going to take the information from our WebSocket trigger and then it's going to send it to other functions that we're going to have at the end state over here. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click on new function over here. We're going to drag this so that it makes sense and we're going to double click on this. The first thing that we want to do, while this is the code, we're going to come back to this in a second. We're just going to give this a descriptive name. So this is going to be our router. You can name this uh, whatever you want really. And then we need to adjust the ports. We're going to have some different um, outbound ports and inbound ports actually that we want to just modify really quick. So you can see by default, this uh, function here comes with inbound and outbound ports. We're just going to delete these really quick and name our own. So we are going to have the REQ ports. We're going to have the message port and we are going to have the close port. And on the outbound side, so we're going to send information out of this processor into two different ports. That's going to be the message port and we're gonna send information to the request port. So again, this is just basically a request router. We're not gonna be doing anything with close here. We're just gonna be piping information from the request to the request outbound and the message to the message outbound. But you're gonna see there's some other important details that we're gonna implement within this function itself that will kind of illustrate why it's necessary. All right, so let's go back now to the handler section. And I'm just gonna get rid of this code here and I'm gonna drop in some code. So I wanted to talk about a really cool thing up here in this constant variable called connections. And as you can see in the comments section here, Lolo has this concept of internal state. In other infrastructure setups, typically in a WebSocket based application, you need to store information like the session ID or the connection ID, other metadata about the user, that kind of stuff. And you typically use an external database to do that or some kind of cache. But in Lolo's case, you don't need to use any kind of external database for this. You're allowed to use this concept of internal state here. So we can create a connections variable and the information that we put inside this variable is going to persist from invocation to invocation. And we're going to be able to utilize whatever is in here throughout our workflow. Really, really convenient because we're going to be managing session IDs and connection IDs in this WebSocket application. So the next section here is just our handler function. We're passing in two things, an event and a context variable. The event variable is going to give us information like, you know, what the user is passing in as a message. The context variable, you can see we're extracting some stuff out of it here, like a route function, an input, um, a log function, and an emit function. This is going to allow us to interact with Lolo a little bit deeper. Um, this will make sense in a couple moments here when we get to actually using these. And you can see here here we are extracting out of the event object itself the session ID. And this is really neat because that Lolo WebSocket library, it automatically generates a session ID for you. So you don't need to worry about doing this yourself. It's automatically provided. All right, so we're just logging out some information. This is useful for debugging. Now we're looking at a switch statement now. And the reason that we need to use switch statements, and by the way, this is a very common pattern in Lolo, is because we, we're working with ports. And ports make it such that one function can be passed in information from multiple different sources, multiple different cases. As you recall, we had a REQ port or a request port, a message port, and a close port. Now, in order to implement the logic in this function correctly, we need to know which port is providing us data in this invocation. At least that's the way I think about it. So we need to have a switch statement here based on the input object. And we need to look at whether or not that input object is related to the request port, if it's related to the message port, or it's related to the close port. So that's why we have these three different cases here. It's all dependent on which port is being used for a particular invocation. So you can see in the request port, this is formed or this is uh, invoked at the initial connection point. And you can see we're storing information inside of our connections variable. We're storing it, well, this is a map. So we're storing a session ID as the key and we're providing it with two functions here, a send function and an end function, and then just some metadata in the info object here, or the info key here. Now we're not gonna be using these functions right here and now. We're gonna be passing this information along so that one of our functions a little bit later in our workflow will be able to utilize this function. 
Now we're also adding to the EV object in the body. We're just adding some metadata here. So we're saying, yes, we're connected and whatever our connection ID is, which is going to be the session ID that was provided by Lolo. And then finally, we're routing the event object or the EV object outbound to our request port. And then we're just breaking out. So this is the initial connection flow. Now the case two is when messages are being sent to our endpoint where someone is trying to chat with the other user. So that's the message case. And all we're really doing here is rerouting this data to the output port and we're just providing some additional metadata. So we're providing that connections object, we're extracting and providing the message object, we're providing the session ID and we're routing that information to the message port. And then finally, in the case of the close function, we're not really doing anything with this. This is just kind of a no op, so to speak. Uh, so nothing really to do in the closed scenario. All right, so this is looking good so far. I'm going to go to the top here and click on back. And now we're just going to drag and drop the ports and connect them to one another. So we're going to connect the request to the request, the message to the message, and the close to the close. We're not going to do anything yet for the outbound side of this, but let's go ahead and click on save again and click on run and just take a look at some of the log data that becomes available when we try to connect to this thing again. You'll see it's slightly different. So if we go to logs now and there we go. So we're listing on port 4000. Let's try to connect to this thing again. So this was our previous iteration. Let's click on connect again. And again, connection established. We're going to just put in this message here. Hey there, going to click on send and go back here. And now we can start to see some interesting information. We can see information came from the request port. It hit the router, which was the function that we just created. And here is the payload. Here's what was inside of it. So we can expand this and we can see just some very basic information. This is the session ID that the Lolo WebSocket library provided for us. So this is what we're going to use to store the state on. And then if you look at the top one here, when we sent our message, data got to our message port. And if we expand this out, you can see under the message section, here is our message. So this is hopefully starting to give you an idea of how everything is connected here. So let's go back now and kind of finish this up. It's actually only a couple steps here that we need to run through. So back to the build section. Now we need to figure out what to do in the message case, which is when messages are getting sent. In a typical WebSocket chat application, we need to broadcast that message out to all of the other users that are connected. At least that's how that's going to work. And then we have the request port here. So let's create a new function for both of these two things. So I'm going to click on new function. Let's start with the request one, which is when the connection is initially formed. So let's give this a name really quick and we're just going to call this um, initial connection handler. And, and then I'm just going to drop in some code really quick. You can see this is super, super simple. We're just logging out the fact that a client has connected and we're just emitting that information back to the user. Uh, so we're going to click on back here and let's just connect those ports. And you know what? We don't need an outbound port here. So I'm just going to go into this really quick and we're going to go to ports and we're going to delete that outbound port. All right, so go back and let's create another function now that's going to be used for our message handler. This is the interesting one where we need to broadcast messages to all of our different clients. So similarly, let's go to the bottom right here. We're going to click on a new function and let's just wire this up initially here because I believe, yeah, we just need to delete this outbound port here. I'm uh, going to come back to the code section. Let's just clean this up really quick. Going to delete that port. And let's drop in this code here and take a look at what's going on. Okay, so we have our initial handler here. We are extracting out of this event object the connections object, that connection state. Remember, that was our map or our dictionary that contains all of the other users that are currently connected right now. And then we're also extracting the current session ID or the current connection ID for this particular user. Then we're calling this broadcast to all function and we're passing in that information. So what does this do? So it's going to loop through all of the connections that we currently have in this connection object. And then for each one that is in there, we are going to attempt to send a message to everyone but the current user. Because this makes sense, right? We want to broadcast that message out to everyone else except for me because I was the one that sent it. So why would I need to receive the message that I just sent? So that's what this brief piece of information does here. 
And so we're just doing a simple if statement. If the current session ID is not equal to the session ID, then we do this, which is just connections session ID. And we're calling that send function. Remember, in the first part of the video, I was saying we were passing along a send function. And this is where we're finally going to use it. And this, because we're doing a for each here, it's going to broadcast this message that was originally sent to all of the other users that are connected to our application right now. So let's go to back now and we're going to give this another test drive. Actually, I want to rename this. So settings, we're going to call this uh, message handler. Let's give this another brief little test drive before we connect it to my front end. We're going to click on save here. Let's click on run and wait for this thing to deploy. All right, so if we go to logs, yep, so everything is working correctly here. Let's do a quick little sanity test again. So um, I'm actually gonna duplicate this tab because we're gonna kind of do a little pseudo chat application between these two testing instances that I have here. So let's connect to this first one. First of all, let's clear this garbage out. We're gonna connect, okay. And you can see here, remember in that initial request handler, we were returning some information back to the user. So we're connected true and here's your connection ID. Let's do the same thing for the other user over here that we're simulating. Let's paste in the endpoint here, click on connect and you can see the same thing is true. Now let's try to send some information between these two users. So hey and okay so that's not being broadcasted to us which is good we're just sending it outbound. So we should see one on the other side. So yeah here's the second user we see hey and yeah we can send back hello there and we should see a hey there on the other side here. Okay so this is working perfectly and this is really the fundamental starting point for any WebSocket based application. So what I want to do now is connect this to my front end. So let's head over into my editor and I'll show you what I got. All right, so here I am in my React app. Now I'm not gonna bore you with the details of everything that's going on in this application. I'll leave this source code for you um, in the description section of this video so you can take a look at what's going on. But all we really need to change right now is this URL string here. We need to provide the Lolo based endpoint here so that we can connect to our application. So I'm just gonna paste that in and I'm just gonna go to my terminal now and run npm start. And I'm gonna show you the front end here with the WebSocket backend, and we're going to see this end to end with a nice little UI attached to it. All right, so my server started up. You can see here I have two tabs open for our chat room, one on the left and one on the right, just asking us for a name really quick. So let's just say I am Daniel on this side and I am, I don't know, Kevin on this side. And we can send a message and this is going to flow using Lolo as the backend between the users. So let's see here. So hey there, Kevin. Hey there, Kevin. We should see something pop up on both sides here. So there you go. So Daniel said, hey there, Kevin. And we can see that Kevin received it. Kevin can reply, hello, Daniel. And you can play with this really quick and you, you can type whatever you want here. And you can see that this is all working correctly using Lolo, completely serverless and very, very simple and easy to set up with minimal time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You can check out Lolo at the link below in the description section. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.